As far as we know, she is the only non-car-carrying passenger boat operating anywhere in Europe. Uh, she was built back in 1955, uh, purely for the purpose of carrying passengers to and from the island. The, she was the last of the post-war post replacements for shipping lost during the Second World War, and she follows the design of all the earlier craft that have now gone to the scrapyard. Um, so she is the last of the class. Uh, she's not that old in comparison with um, boats that the company have had in service. The Viking, which uh, used to operate the Fleetwood to Douglas service uh, until shortly after the war, um, was many years older than that. Um, she is really the most modern of the uh, non-car uh, carrying uh, boats operated by the company. The uh, engineering equipment is uh, similar in nature to that uh, on the two uh, steam operated uh, car ferries, uh, that's the Bemacree and the Manx Maid. She, she is really like um, a mini version of the old uh, Queen Elizabeth, the Mauritania, the Lusitania that used to ply across the Atlantic. For many people living in Lancashire, I suppose she would represent the, the, the only chance they would have to get anywhere near the, the big ship feel. Um, she was built as a dual class ship, uh, first and second class passengers were carried originally. The company has now dropped the policy of, um, of operating uh, two classes of passenger. Uh, so up in the bows uh, you have the first class lounge which is, is beautifully fitted out with wood panelling. Uh, deep, uh, luxurious seating, settees, um, armchairs, things of this nature. Um, below decks you have the dining saloon, which I think would rival many uh, a five-star hotel anywhere through in the country. Um, the silverware, if you go down and have a look in there, the, the, uh, the tables, the, the, the up furnishing in there is of the highest quality. Uh, she really is a magnificent ship. <laughs> I'm in charge of the catering on the ship. Um, I have about 30 staff, well, 29 staff, under me, including uh, eight boys and uh, the rest are all adult ratings, um, five females, and the rest are male ratings. Uh, we have uh, three cooks, two pounds of uh, one, one cook is for the crew, aft, and two cooks for the main galley, officers and passengers. We have a rough idea of how many passengers we're going to carry, so we work on, on the basis, you know, how many we're going to carry, and we have to work out roughly how much food we're going to use during that trip. Uh, we get all, the, all our perishables daily, like pies, and bread, uh, stuff for sandwiches, and that's all sold through the main buffets, you know. To actually uh, cater for people's feeding habits today is very, very hard because there's a, it's a terrific amount of variety now in what people eat to what they used to eat, you know, years ago. Um, you used to get a certain percentage of the passengers we carried would come in for a, a full meal, but now um, they go in for sort of snacks, pies, sandwiches and what, you know, so you can't actually cater. Uh, for people's needs, you know, like you used to be able to. If the weather's bad, you still get your, your like what we call regular passengers who can eat a meal. But um, even today, like, um, there's a lot more people uh, don't suffer from seasickness like they used to be, you know, a few years ago. You can't actually cater uh, for people's needs, you know, like you used to be able to. If the weather's bad, you still get your like what we call regular passengers who can eat a meal but um, even today like um, there's a lot more people uh, don't suffer from seasickness like they used to be you know a few years ago it's a fine sunny day there are people talking the around in deck chairs everyone obviously enjoying themselves but uh, for me personally and for the many regulars who are aboard uh, it's now lunchtime we do have Dare I say it, an unwritten rule that uh, lunch shall not be taken before 12 and there's lots of tub thumping goes on about 12 o'clock and lo and behold, out come the meals and we're all enjoying those. I brought my own pack lunch this time, yes. I usually go, I go down the canteen occasionally and it's, uh, it's really excellent. We have about, uh, what, probably about 20, 20 odd who are contract holders. 
and uh, we all meet up each Sunday and uh, we'll all go separate ways when we get on the island. I remember going across one year for a day from lodgings, there were about 30 tonnes went across and it was that rough, everybody was down at the bottom. And I had my mother-in-law there and child, one of my grandchildren, I took them down below and anyway, nurse says to me, she says, now if, if you leave them with us, just look after them, like we look after them. I said, I'll fetch you one down so you'll not get around. Well, I went up front deck and there was a big fat one about 20 stone. I carried it out, towed Lavi, you know, front front. Takes it down and dumps it into the bottom. She never moved off that boat till it got back to Fleetwood. <laughs> she had to have an old time. I laughed many a time over it. <laughs> we took a couple of years and it was a honeymoon at the same time. We took a, a basket of sandwiches with us and the only two of us ate them, they were all sick. <laughs> I've always been interested in painting and I've always been interested in the Isle of Man. My piece, I like the Marksman very much. Uh, they were a marvellous class of ship and uh, I think the painting I did of the Marksman for Ships Monthly was one of the best I did. The lines, the shape of a, a ship, which uh, is not true of a lot of the modern new ships, but uh, of the Marksman particularly, the flare of the bows and the sheer and the, general curves of the ship you make a very visually pleasing thing I think you'd always get along and you know and there uh, well you miss the people and mixing with the people passengers having a talk with them having the yarn you have the old contractors here they always come up and bid you the time of the day and you have a talk with them you see you see them two or three times a week sitting down there you're half now and join the sun the contractors prefer this vessel there uh, the Manson because She's steady, there's not all that much vibration or anything like that, she's just steady. If you were to go and ask them which they prefer, I think they prefer the Manxton. But these pensions see they'll be in the 60s or 70s, they've been doing it for years, you see. They like to run just the Isle of Man, some of them just go up in the quay and come back again. Because some of them come for, you know, health reasons, fresh airs, they've been city people, you see, and you can't get any better air than what's out here now at the moment. If you've got a clear day, a lovely day, you see the Isle of Man, see all around there. Coast here now. What you must remember is the whole holiday trend has changed in the years from 1956 to the present date. Uh, we carried in those days, on a daily service out of, out of Fleetwood, 4,000, 1,200 people daily with the Wakes holidays in the peak of the season when they would be transported by train. There would be perhaps between Friday a.m. and Saturday noon, anything up to five, seven sailings out of Fleetwood to draw those people, who in the main then were all foot passengers. You see, for some, t what, ten, twelve years, we didn't operate out of Fleetwood at all. Once Dr. Beeching axed Fleetwood as a railway port. It's predominantly, and always has been, day trip. By that I mean we draw on the people that are holidaying in Blackpool, Morecambe, Fleetwood itself, to give them a, a day out, if you like, in the Isle of Man. Comparing the people that we bring out today to what we brought out in 1956, those people, they want to load their motor car outside their own front door, drive, admittedly, to the port of embarkation, be transported with their car by ship to the island. But I wouldn't say that it sounds the death knell for the, uh, the Mainsman. You've got to appreciate that she was built for transporting people in a different era. The season uh, on the island this year has gone pretty badly. Estimates putting it 30 to 40 cent below the normal uh, seasonal um, uh, traffic. Um, she's a very costly ship to operate. She costs roughly twice as much uh, from the consumption of fuel oil as do the diesel boats, um, which means that uh, she's not very attractive. Uh, and of course, her non-car carrying capacity tends to limit her to her versatility on, on certain routes. Um, you have to make this boat pay simply by filling it up with people. And um, apart from today, when we seem to have a good turnout from Fleetwood, uh, generally speaking, this year uh, she's run fairly well below par. So what the future from the company's point of view is remains to be seen. They, I, I don't think they've, they've firmly committed themselves, but I think it will depend very much on the, when they sort of make their accounts at the end of the, the season as to whether she stops or whether she goes.